Now, uh, my day gig is working as a file clerk in the Cleveland VA hospital, but uh, I've been writing underground comic book stories since 1972. I got started because I like what the underground artists of the 1960s were doing. They were dealing with stuff that hadn't been dealt with before. So I said to myself, why stop with what these guys are writing about, the counterculture of the 60s? I thought, why not do a comic about my life, the life of a file clerk in Cleveland? I mean, my life is as interesting as the next guy's life, which is also interesting. They're all interesting. So I wrote some stories using panels and uh, thought balloons, word balloons, stick figures. Yeah, I don't draw good folks. And I made a little storyboard. I was pleased with him. So then I started asking around, trying to figure out how much it would cost to publish my own comic book. Now, I live real simple and cheap. You know, I, I don't have a car. I eat cheap food like maybe I'll have uh, two hot dogs and some potato chips for supper. So I found that I could save up enough bread in one year to publish a comic book. That settled it. I'll print it, and if I lose money, so what, right? So now I publish American Splendor, and I'm really glad I did. Uh, my name has been a matter of concern to me over the years. It's an unusual name, Harvey P. Carr. I mean, Harvey doesn't go well with P. Carr, not in a conventional sense, at least. I read in various places that Harvey is of a Celtic, Germanic, French origin, while P. Carr is a Slavic name. Now, strangely, I'm neither Celtic, Germanic, French, or Slavic. When I was younger, my acquaintances used to tease me because of my name. They'd say, Harvey pees in his car. Once my best friend made an admittedly witty remark, he said, What comes after the dining car? The pee car. Despite this, we remained friends. Later, some people started calling me Harvey Pecker. I don't like that. Then there were those who referred to me as Harvey the Rabbit. I thought they were being quite clever. But I was a physically strong and determined young man, and as time went on, I gained the respect of my peers in one way or another. For a while, I forgot about it. It was as if I was named John Smith. Now, I was married at an early age. My first wife would later become my first ex-wife. My first wife, she thought I had an excellent name. She convinced me that I did. It was a unique name, a name with character. So I was married in the summer of 1960 and promptly got a telephone. Now, in the next spring, the new telephone book comes out. And imagine my surprise when I turned to see my name. Then, in addition to me, another Harvey P. Carr was listed. Now, I'm listed as Harvey L. P. Carr. My middle initial is Lawrence. He was simply listed as Harvey P. Carr, therefore a purer listing. But I learned to accept it. Each year, I'd feel less strongly as I saw the other Harvey P. Carr's name. Then in 1966, I noticed that a third Harvey P. Carr was listed in the phone book. Now, this filled me with curiosity. How could there be three people with such an unusual name in the world, let alone in one city? I once got a long-distance telephone call at midnight for a Harvey P. Carr with some woman calling from Florida. I didn't know who she was. She'd mistaken me for one of the other two Harvey P. Cars. Now, the call caused me to wonder what sort of person he was, right? Well, of course, I had no way of knowing. Except one day, a person I worked with expressed her sympathy concerning what she thought to be the death of my father. Now, I knew my father to be alive and in good health, and I asked her where she'd gotten the notion he had died. She pointed out this obituary notice in the newspaper for a man named Harvey P. Carr, and one of his sons was named Harvey. These were the other two Harvey P. Cars. Well, six months later, Harvey P. Carr Jr. died. And although I met neither man, I was filled with sadness. What were they like, I thought. It seemed that our lives had been linked in some indefinable way. Well, the next year, the telephone directory contained only my name. And then two years later, another Harvey P. Carr appears in a telephone book. What kind of people are these? Where do they come from? What do they do? What's in a name? Who's Harvey P. Carr? <laughs>